my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa. Today I have got a sweet treat inspired recipe video for you. We are making classic desserts healthier. So I've chose three desserts that I personally love and I think are classics. Some might disagree, but I feel like they're classics and I'm kind of healthifying them, I guess you can say. These recipes are mostly vegan. One of them does use honey. I will give a substitute if you do not eat honey, so make sure to check that out as well. So these absolutely all can be made vegan, and they are also all gluten-free, and they use no refined sugar. So hopefully they're like, like I said, healthier alternatives to some of the classic recipes. So the three recipes that we're gonna be making today are a soft and chewy vegan chocolate chip cookie. They are potentially the best chocolate chip cookies ever. They're so good. We're also going to be making some fudgy chocolate brownies and then we're finishing things off with a gluten-free version of Rice Krispie Treats that uses honey. So all of these recipes are really simple to make. They're delicious and they are already up on the blog so if you're interested in making them you can find the links for the recipes right down below this description box. And as always, before we dive in, I just want to encourage you to subscribe if you are not already a subscriber here on this channel. If you enjoy healthy recipes like this, as well as lifestyle advice and wellness tips, then I highly recommend you subscribe. There is a red button right below this video that says subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started and get into today's recipes. So the first recipe we're gonna make are the soft and chewy chocolate chip cookies. We're gonna start by adding some melted coconut oil into our bowl. To that, you'll also add some coconut sugar. And then I like to use my electric mixer here and I just beat it together until it's combined. It's gonna be kind of sandy. It's not gonna be creamy like butter. But once it's combined, you can add in the flax egg as well as some vanilla extract. And then you'll use your electric mixer again to beat that together. And then it should get kind of creamy at that point. It will be not like fluffy, but it will be nice and soft and creamy. To there, we will add in our dry ingredients. So we're going to be using some quinoa flour here. We're also going to be adding a touch of arrowroot starch, some baking soda, and some sea salt. And then you can either fold this all together or honestly, I find it just easier to use the electric mixer again to beat it all together. Just make sure that it's on low so that your flour doesn't like spray all over your kitchen. Once you have your dough all combined and the flour has been completely mixed into the dough, you are gonna add in your chocolate chips. So I just use some vegan dark chocolate chips and then I use a spatula or wooden spoon to fold that all together and try to make sure that the chocolate chips are as evenly spread out through that dough as you can. The next step is to let this chill. I recommend that you let it chill for at least half an hour. It just kind of gives it a better texture when they bake it and helps them be a little bit chewier. And once they have cooled, they will kind of harden a bit because coconut oil hardens when it cools. So you are gonna wanna just let it sit at room temperature for a good five minutes, just so that it kind of heats up a little bit, warms up, I guess, and you can scoop it out of the bowl. So I like to use a cookie scoop. I've used this in pretty much every cookie video that I've ever made. I'll link it down below for you. It makes the perfect size cookies every time. So I scoop out the dough using that cookie scoop. I put it into my hand and then I just form the cookie into a ball and then you can put the balls onto the baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper and once you've completed that you've filled your baking sheet and you've used all your dough you're going to use your hands to just kind of flatten the cookies down so that's going to help them spread it more evenly and it's also going to help them get crispy edges and chewy centers from there, we will bake these at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes, and then I recommend letting them cool in the pan for two to three minutes before you transfer them to a wire rack. And again, I will say, these cookies are absolutely fabulous. I had them on my counter in an airtight container for like four days. They still tasted amazing, and they retained that awesome chewy texture, so I highly recommend you guys make them because I think they will quickly become your favorite cookie of all time. The next recipe we're making are brownies. We're gonna start by making our wet ingredients together first. So we're gonna use a flax egg, as well as some almond milk. We're also gonna use some mashed avocado. If you don't wanna use avocado, you could use mashed banana or applesauce. We're gonna use some melted chocolate. I just took half a cup of dark chocolate chips and melted those in the microwave. Add that in there. And then we're also gonna add a cup of coconut sugar. And then you will take a whisk to beat this all together. And once it's smooth, you can set it aside and move on to the dry ingredients. So for the dry ingredients, we're gonna be using oat flour as well as almond flour. We're also gonna use cacao powder, a little bit of arrowroot starch, sea salt, and some baking soda. 
and whisk that all together until it's combined. I do find that cocoa powder or cacao powder as well as almond flour tends to get kind of clumpy, like you'll see the little balls in there. I recommend using your hands to break those up as much as you can. So whisk it as much as you can or use your hands to break everything up. Alternatively, you could also sift it all together. Once the dry ingredients are together, you're just gonna pour the wet ingredients into this bowl. You'll use a spatula to fold it all together. And this dough is on the thicker side. It kind of is like a spreadable texture. You'll see when we put it in the pan, but definitely on the thicker side. So don't worry about that. Don't add more liquid. It's gonna work, don't worry. And once you have that all combined, you can add that into your baking pan. For this recipe, I recommend using an eight by eight baking pan. I line it with parchment paper and then I just dump the dough directly into the pan. And I recommend using your spatula, kind of spread it out as evenly as you can. And then if it starts to stick to the spatula or the parchment paper moves around, which tends to happen, just lightly wet your hands and you can just press the dough into the pan using your hands and you can kind of like get it more evenly spread out in there. Once you have it all evenly in there, you can bake this. I baked these for about 20 minutes or so at 350 degrees, and then you're gonna let it cool completely before you slice it. So I'm gonna link the recipe that I based these off down below. I didn't follow it exactly. I wanted to simplify it a little bit more for you guys, so the one that I based it off is down below, and I'll let you know any modifications I made in the description box as well. Once you are ready to enjoy these brownies, they're nice and cool, you can cut them into your squares, and just like regular brownies, they are delicious. They're chocolatey, they're gooey, they're fudgy, perfectly sweet, and also vegan and gluten-free, which is awesome. So I hope you guys try these just like the cookies, and I hope you finally have a delicious, healthy version of the classic brownies. Last but not least, we're gonna be making our Rice Krispie treats. So. Start by whisking together some almond butter and honey in a pan. I, for some reason, forgot to film that slash can't find the footage. So basically, add it into a pan, put it on low heat, and whisk it all together until it's melted. And if you are completely vegan and you don't eat honey, then you can use brown rice syrup instead of the honey. So just once it's smooth and combined, you can set that aside. And we're actually gonna just pour it directly onto our Rice Krispies. So the Rice Krispies that I use are just brown Rice Krispies. I bought them at Whole Foods. They're the regular 365 brand. They taste exactly like regular Rice Krispies, but they're made with brown rice instead of white rice. So they are a tiny bit healthier and they're also gluten-free and they work perfectly here. So just pour that liquid mixture over the Rice Krispies and then you will use your spoon to mix it all together and Again, for some reason, can't find the footage of that, so sorry about that, but I basically just stir it together with my spatula. And then you can transfer it into a non-stick pan. It doesn't really matter if it has parchment paper because they shouldn't really stick. I didn't have any trouble with them sticking in this pan, but basically just transfer all of that Rice Krispie mixture into your pan and then use your hands to really press it down into the pan. You wanna press as hard as possible because it's not super sticky like marshmallows. You really need to press it down in order for this everything to hold together. If you find that you can't press it down hard enough with your hands, you can also use a flat bottom glass or like a measuring cup or something like that. I tend to do a mixture of both, so I'll press it as firmly as I can with my hands and then I'll use a flat bottom glass or a metal measuring cup to press it down even further, especially towards the corners. But once you have it kind of flat on top and it's totally as firm as you can get it, pop this in the fridge for about an hour. This will help everything kind of harden, I guess, a little bit and it'll help everything hold together better. I do recommend storing these in the fridge. It helps prolong their shelf life, I guess you can say. Um, and it just kind of keeps them firm and together. So once they are cooled, you can just dump the pan out. It should just come right out of the pan and cut it into your squares. And that's it for these ones. They taste so good. They definitely have a strong flavor of honey, which I personally think is delicious. Um, they'll taste different, obviously, if you use brown rice syrup, but they have that crunch, they hold together, they are super, super delicious. They're also super easy to make, which is great. And if you make sure that you buy certified gluten-free Rice Krispies, then they're also gluten-free. And there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's recipes. 
definitely let me know which one you're gonna try first in the comments. They're all delicious. If I had to choose one, I would choose the chocolate chip cookies because they are just like, mm, so good. So if you do wanna make all of the recipes or any of the recipes, the links are down in the description box for you. These are up on the blog already that has instructions, ingredient lists, more photos, and it talks a little bit more about the recipe. So if you're interested in checking that out, I've left those links down below for you. And I also always leave product links down below. So if there's any tools that I've used or specific ingredients that are used in the recipes, those are also always linked below. So check that out as well. If you have any questions as you go, you can come back to this video and let me know, or you can comment on the blog post. And if you do end up making it, I would love for you to leave a star rating and review on the blog post. It just helps us get our recipes out to more people. So I would appreciate it if you did that. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe before you go. There's a red button right below this video that says subscribe. And if you click that little bell that's right next to the subscribe button, that will turn on your notifications. And give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here. As always, you're the best. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.